Welcome to Unstoppable Podcast with Harry Sardinas, inspiring conversations with influential millionaires, investors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs who are making a massive difference with their innovative products and services and sharing the challenges and wisdom of how they sold their first million. How would you like to achieve your first million in sales? And today we're connecting from London to United States. And we have Nancy, which her business is about home renovation. So Nancy, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. And my name is Nancy Villatoro. I am originally from El Salvador, and I am currently in Houston, Texas, United States. And I have my own business. So what I do, I do home improvements and I help like single moms to renovate their houses. And I wanted to share with you my five steps to make your first million dollars. That's fantastic. So, But before that, Nancy, we want to know why you decide to become an entrepreneur in the first place. First of all, as a single mom, you will have to know the you had to manage your own time. And for me, it was super hard to be under someone else's schedule. What I decide is just to go for it and pursue my dreams. But how you decide that this, the, anybody owns a business in your family, your dad is an entrepreneur, your mom is an entrepreneur, a neighbor, uncle? Well, Who's actually an my mom- your family? My mom was an entrepreneur by heart, for Ah, sure. yeah, what was She, her business? Well, the... she used to have, she used to have like a um a, a cook business, so she used to have a mini restaurant for that. Really, where in Salvador? In El Salvador, she used to make pupusas. <laughs> so did you used to have her? You used to have your yeah, mom. Yeah, I used to. I used to help her. I was kind of her accounting, so I was. Ah, you were doing accountancy for your mom. How old were you when you were doing accountants? <laughs> For your mom? Well, actually, I was 16 years old. 16? Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she have a lot of clients. Yeah, she does. She used to have a lot of clients. I used to be, she was one of the best women in there. <laughs> so what happened? She was making profit because you were the accountant. So it was making profit or was that? Was too much work and not so much money? Or how was it? Well, she used to make good profit. Yeah. Oh, really? I was tons of money they're coming in uh the only problem was like uh we were having like a uh, this type of issues with the environment in el salvador back in the day but luckily now it's kind of like uh, it's getting better but my mom she was getting a lot of clients and she used to make well living in there just doing that whoa mm -hmm. so we can say that the, your entrepreneurial uh, vibe came from your mom that's correct Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> so then what happened? Now that you're in the United States, you become a single mom, and now you want to have your own business, right? Yes, yes. So I want to have my own business, so that's why I decided to open my own LLC. And that's you, solopreneur of LLC license here. Wow. But the... So what made you think that making home renovation and happy single mom to renovate the mom's This is going to be a business. Are you going to make some money out of this? What made you think that this was, that you can make money doing this? Well, for first of all, uh, my uncle, he invited me. He asked me, Nancy, can you help me out to uh, book my appointments and uh, marketing my business and uh, schedule appointments, do the invoices and things like that. Oh, wow. And I say yes, and like uh, what I will get in return is like he say I will give you a percentage <laughs> or each mm -hmm. job, whatever job we finish it, I will give you this percent to you. And I was like, when I calculated how much it cost to renovate a bathroom, it's like a twelve thousand, ten thousand, and he was like, oh, I'll give you ten percent. I was so happy, like 10%. This is good money. Good money, huh? <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> it's like good money. So, okay, well, let's do this. <laughs> so I decided, okay, I'll do this. And yeah, okay. That's how we started. Okay, very good. And now you're doing it by yourself 100% or you're still working with your uncle? 
No, now I recruit other subcontractors. So I decide wow. to spend myself. Yes, so I recruit other contractors who will do the jobs and then I will send them jobs. They will accept it. They will give me the, the estimate or sometimes they will do the estimates on their own and they will present and I'm still getting my percentage. So how come all this job think. comes to you? Why everybody? So every time, every problem that is in a house in old Texas, they say, let's call Nancy, she will sort you out. How everybody knows mm -hmm. that you can help them out? Well, because uh, first of all, I promote my business. I'm a vendor in the city of Houston. So that's something that I will recommend to anybody who wants to uh, promote their business. Go to the expo, be as a vendor, get your table, uh, get your banner, get your website, get your flyers, your business card, show, present yourself, meet new people, and that's how you're going to get your clients. So the majority of your clients are women or men? Actually, it's a mix. So most of my clients, there can be like a people who are uh, were my friends in the past. I work with them in the past or people, new people who are approached. So those are kind of like the clients, but it also, one of the things they work out for me, so I run an ad, like some every three months I run an ad. So that's kind of like you collect new clients and you get your, your, your name out there. But what, from where do you learn this? Because you didn't learn this from your mom. Your mom was not running ads in there in Salvador. Everybody liked their food and everybody was telling their friends. Completely different book game is what you're doing, running out by yourself. Oh, my God. So where, where oh, do you yeah. learn how to do this? Who show you? Uh, well, one of the things is I went to school. I went to college, and I take entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship class. Oh, wow, really? And, yeah, so there it will teach you the foundations of how to start a business. They will teach you how to market in, uh, what license you will need. If you, you are doing like a stone sort of like 1099 uh, work that I, that I am doing it, uh, what what do you have to do? Like how are you going to report that to IRS? Or all those things, all the foundation, you will learn it from there. But you also can hire a consultant or you can also do other things that make it more easier and you don't have to make it complicated. For me, I decide to go to school and learn those skills. Yeah, but then that is a completely different book game to open a book and to have all your guests as always high mark in the school. Completely different book game is to open a book and to learn about business. It's, it's, it's something different and actually doing it for real, yeah? <laughs> so, yes, yes. So, I agree with uh, that. So you did learn some stuff on the school, but then you said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my own business, right? In a home decoration, yeah? You saw that your yeah. uncle was making good money. I said, oh, this is kind of a good idea. So I'm going to be in this market, right? But what happened yeah. with this? This market is full of boys. Boys are very annoying. You know, they shout too much. They're messy. They're dirty. Uh, they make a yeah, so how how you dealing with all these people? Yeah, they're well, very yeah. formal. Boys are not like this, you know, they're very formal, they complain, they make mistakes, <laughs> they don't clean properly after they work. You know, boys, how we are, yeah. So, how you deal with them? Did they yes. listen to you? <laughs> well, then why do well, you pay them? No, they have to, eh? <laughs> so basically, like, what we, we do, what we do is. Like a, we we do a contract, and what in the contract I said you had to give me the job how I want it and how I ask it for, and anything like debris things like that, like it has to be clean, perfect because that's how you're gonna deliver your service to the client, and like with the contract, like when you're they see a contract this is a formal thing so they got more respect to you they just go like oh for warm out so i guess like have a contract have something like that with the subcontractor that will kind of like help you out the most so who we'll show you how to do these order. contracts also where do you learn how to do these contracts <laughs> Well, the contracts is another thing. So with oh, that, a you have to, thing, yeah. <laughs> that's a different one. So first, for that, you had to go uh, and take a class as a uh, 
project management. Mm -hmm. So I take another class for that. Oh, and that's very clever, yeah. Know. Very good. Yes. Yeah. So uh, with that class, you will learn how to read drawings, which is like architecture drawings, and schedule work, like a progress and whatever, like how you're going to um, communicate with your client and with your contractors with work progress and whatnot, um, insurance, bounding, um, it, like agreements, change orders, because sometimes it, it could happen, like uh, sometimes like um, in architect, they did these drawings and for some reason they want a different. So that's when it occurs change orders in our environment. And that's, we have to be aware and we have to do a totally a new contract for that in scenarios. But those are other things that you could learn uh, if you are a project. Yeah, but with manager. the contract, if you make a mistake, you have to pay from your own pocket, yeah? Sometimes <laughs> a lot of money, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, sometimes it can be a lot of money, but with the change orders, if you go with agreement with the owner, you can also, they can pay your hire because if it's not your exactly, fault, because it's the... your fault, yeah, it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to be yes. careful how you do these contracts because uh, if, if you if you do it wrongly, you can end up paying with from your own pocket. But like you said, if it's not your fault, you can make a lot of money, right? Yes, yes, because like a, when you're doing those contracts, you have to be aware that there is also a timing from the owner and a timing for the uh, contractor. So it's like a lot of time timing in both parties. So it is it, it like a timing is critical because it's of like course. you're delaying something. Let's say you are doing a work in an airport and it has to a deadline for let's say, um, oh, my deadline is in three months and you are delayed 15 days. You have to pay off and, yeah. and in after that if you are delaying for that, that time. So it's super, super critical, meet deadlines, try to, try to read your contracts, compliance and safety is also critical safety yeah also. so there is a lot of a lot of things that you had to kind of like greet and go over with timing yeah. nancy is one of the most important thing right i remember back in the day when we were doing a lot of contract with my team i used to have to the team and said listen it's gonna <laughs> take, you you guys said that it's gonna take you three months to finish the house but if you finish in two months I'm gonna give you a bonus. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the house is empty for one month. So it's gonna yeah. be empty anyway. So I was thinking to the guy, okay, how much rent I'm gonna get for this house for a month? Let's say 5,000. I would say, you know what? I better pay them 3K. They finish quickly. I rent it quickly. I make 2,000. Everybody wins and they have a bonus. But I remember telling them, yeah, with the contract, like you said, I said, you have to finish in three months. If you don't finish yeah. in three months, this is going to be a problem. You're going to pay them. It's going to be you who's going to pay me then. Because now yes, I cannot true. rent the house because you guys are still inside, right? They're uh, fixing it and so on. So, so yes. time, timing is very critical when it comes to property. Mm -hmm. Depends depends of 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 the property you know would depend it could be a renovation people living there that's fine but sometimes the properties are empty and the reason that they're fixing it is because they want to rent it quickly and make money right <laughs> so that's right yeah. so yeah. you have to finish quickly and good yeah so okay now so you said that you wrote the book also oh my god you yeah so i wrote my book and actually it's my story show it to uh, us your story yeah, so what, here we go. Uh, That's how it looks oh, like. from bully to oh, I like the title. From bully yeah. to builder, very good. Why do you put the picture of you so small? You should put yourself bigger then. That's you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah you're me. bigger. Wait, don't, don't put your picture too small next time. Yeah, from bully yeah, to build. Oh, okay. to... <laughs> so where can we find your book? Where can we find your book? Amazon, yeah. where? Yes, you can find my book on Amazon. Uh, we also, I have it in the library.
library here in Houston, Texas. Uh, so they do have a copy of the there. library. They can rent it for free. I don't think they charge for that, but you can still, you can get it from Amazon. So. Okay, and so tell us my... a little bit more about this bully thing. What happened? Where was the bully? In Salvador? In United mm -hmm. States? Where? <laughs> Well, the bullying thing, it happens in El Salvador. Why? Because but, you're very tiny? Yeah, <laughs> because I was so tiny, I guess. I don't know. So, um, but I, I also, when I was starting out with my business here, since I was a female, and... Everybody and tried to bully industry, you as well, yeah? They were like a old males. And like a, exactly, they want to, to, want to push you around, like yeah. That. And you're very small, yeah? yeah. So, yeah, so I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to prove these people that I'm going to take my, you know, all my credentials, all that I could. And, and I'm going to do, I'm I'm... do proper contracts. So if they don't do what I say, they will see what's going to happen to them. Yeah. <laughs> you went to school exactly. and you learn. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I took my, the way that I did it, it took me longer because I decided to go and follow different paths. If you were to go just a straight there, you know, but yeah, I take a different path. No, look, nobody, nobody started as an entrepreneur. It's a very lonely journey, right? Especially you sing a mom, then you need to look after your kids, the consumer all the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't have kids, but my brother, I have a nephew. Yeah. And I just by seeing my brother looking at my nephew, I'm getting tired myself. Yeah. So it's a <laughs> it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, right? So yes, yes it is. So then then uh, I think that as entrepreneur, you always have it in your genes, right? That you that you say, you know, I'm gonna design the life my own way, I'm gonna create a a good uh living for my for my children for my family right and for yourself also yeah i'm so happy that you you are very successful even you have time to write the book which is a big challenge yeah i wrote several they're a big headache we own a book publishing company also here in in united kingdom my girlfriend owns a book publishing company and we we write a lot of books and every time that we write a book it's like a baby yeah for first you, you we, like, we don't want to let go of the book, yeah? It's a big work, big job, yeah? I like the title, very good, very inspiring, yeah? So, Nancy, the, um, so what was your biggest challenge in business, building, growing your business, and how you overcome this challenge? Well, one of my challenges was, like, overcoming rejection. And I say so this. What happened, the reje what happened with rejection? Yeah, the client, the client doesn't want to do business with you. I said, no, yes. no, I don't, I don't do round renovation. You're a woman. Uh, I don't do business with women. The what that client was telling you this? Well, they were not telling me this, but you. <laughs> but that's what they told, yeah. But they, I think, like they might be like, oh no, it's like a. Because you take so much time to write all this contract, you take a lot of time. To yeah. Learn, like, and all this and do the quotation and, and everything just, takes a lot of time yeah yeah because you have so to analyze I, everything and after what they say they don't want they don't want your contract they don't want to why maybe you were charging more expensive or what, what was it <laughs> um <laughs> it could have been well i it's just a different scenarios but sometimes i feel like I maybe it might be because it was some other people that were doing a cheaper labor uh, than us uh it could have been different things but I feel like uh, once I realize well probably this is not my client my ideal client this is not exactly. my client up to. Yeah. and I was like okay I cannot just like think about like this person it will say no to me there will be people out there that will yeah. say yes to me exactly. and I just so. feel like uh, I shift my mind and I'll say okay so I think there will be people out there that will be happy to work with me. They will be delighted, and then we're going to be happy and working together. And so that was and the, some people, the way that's that. it. Yeah. And some people, they yeah. don't want to work with you, and that's also okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, and it's about to find the, the idea client, Nancy, because sometimes we stick with this client, you know, that is very stingy, 
that is making us wear so much for nothing. Do you understand? I remember yeah. I, we have a, we, we did a lot of property maintenance because we run a, a, an agency, a property agency back on the day. I'm telling you 15 years ago, yeah? Uh, so I used to have hair back then, so I might. And I remember that I have different clients. I have this client that we need to do go and do the home renovation. And then, well, no, don't buy this material, buy cheaper. And I'm thinking, man, if I buy this cheaper material, for example, paint, yeah? If you buy low quality paint, right? You need to paint three times and the labor of the person is more expensive. I said, listen, you don't know what you're talking about. You're going to waste more money like this because you want the house paint in white, right? And you buy low quality paint. The labor is going to be way more expensive you spend with the paint. Let me do my job. No, no, no. You buy the cheap material, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, uh, however, I remember the, um, we have a Jewish client, several clients that they were telling me, Harry, you choose, listen, they were telling me, I want the reading in two weeks, Harry. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Two weeks. Do you understand two weeks? I say, yeah, in two weeks. Two weeks, I want the reading. And they were saying, no, I was asking, okay, what's the budget? What's the material? They were saying, listen, go and buy whatever you want and tell me how much it is. I don't care. I need the house ready in two weeks because I need to rent it. X, Y, and Z. This is what I need. Okay. So... I realized that, you know, you have different type of clients are different, you know, there were these old Jewish property investors, they own a lot of houses, they don't have time to to be, you know, uh whether the other single landlord, of course, you know, they are they only have one property or two, so they, they're more tied with money and they they need to, you know, to to over uh look everything and check out the details and everything, right? So nothing wrong, right? But you know, different companies can serve different um, different pros. So I realize same like you that sometimes you know, uh, sometimes we don't we don't need to attach to this client that give us so much headache. We don't need yeah. because it doesn't matter that we're gonna attach to a client. You know, why do you want a client that give you headache on the first place? It's better exactly. to and you are thinking, oh. I cannot lose this client. Like I was thinking when I when I was starting my business. No, I was I was thinking it personally. No, no, no. This client, I'm not gonna lose it. Even if I had to put money from my pocket, he will be my client. And I'm just too attached to the client like this. I'm and now I'm thinking, what's the point? How, you know what what idiot, you know, just let the client go. You know, you will be able to find all the ones that you know that can pay you more, that can be more happy with you, that can give you more job. I have clients that refer me a lot of clients also. They were so happy that they were telling all their friends. Most of the money that we make in property doing renovation, property maintenance. I remember we used to manage like, uh, we sold over 5 million doing this. Yeah. Back in the day, we managed like 28 houses, like hundreds of tenants, right? And then... We have a bond 24 hours, you know, with repairs, you know, because when you have so many properties like this, every day something happened. Yeah. Some every single day something happened. <laughs> so the <laughs> washing machine doesn't work, the window is broken, every day something happens. So you need to have, you know, 24 by 7 uh, a, a van with a couple of builders, you know, going around all the time, right? So yeah. And and again, and we did some some work for the contractor, right? So, anyway, so what? Um, and that's why I was asking you that if if you have some of your clients that were women, because sometimes people don't notice that sometimes women buy better from women, or maybe that's your niche. Or oh, Nancy, what's your niche? Tell me what is your idea, client? Yeah, it's a boy, it's well, a girl, it's a young, is it old? What's your idea, client? Because we want more of this to come to you, yeah? So what are you based? Think, say again. Say, say again. I think my, my ideal client, it will be a homeowner for sure. Homeowner. Okay. Yeah. Is it old? Is it young? What? How age? Is it a boy or girl? What is it? It could be a girl okay. or a woman or it can be a male. It doesn't matter? Um, it doesn't matter. 
maybe like around my age will be good. That way we can understand more you Very know, good. each other. So I think like someone like that. Um, I find myself that I work better with Americans and some like a Middle East people. I tend Mm -hmm. to kind of like connect a lot with this But that's right. uh, type of yes, uh, Mm. yeah. So that's kind of like in my book of business. They are most like that. As for now and then, I tend to do business with Spanish community, but uh, it seems like uh, I get better clients with uh, with the American market. Yeah, I think uh, it, because of the different. a kind of culture i think right in the yeah here in, I Lo- guess... here in london everybody said mañana mañana you know <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. you're from cuba you're latin america mañana mañana you know so they're here and you get you know they want everything done on time right and <laughs> the <laughs> ah we have different cultures you know we're more uh, laid back you know and uh And I think that maybe, but it's all about, you know, we train and coach a lot of business around the world, yeah? And we ask some of the, a lot of questions, that question to entrepreneurs because it's important that people understand who is your client. Because if you understand who is your idea client, you can go out and then and find them, right? So yeah. I'm so happy for you that you're running a big operation. You went to school, you learn about contracts, you learn about project management. You wrote your book. Uh, so uh, tell us, yeah, for every single mom that is listening to us, that, you know, that they have a boss and they have to go to work every day and they don't spend time with the kids and then they only have 28 days of holiday and they cannot manage their own time. And they want some freedom. They want better for the family. Yeah. So what advice do you have for this single mom that listening to the podcast right now? Well, my my advice will be to kind of like a, sit yourself in a quiet space and ask yourself what skills do you have? What skills that you can convert, that you can sell, that you can monetize? It doesn't necessarily has to be construction as me. It has to be, it can be something different. But I, like if you are able to sell at least three or four items in over the weekend, that means that you can continue doing that and you can kind of increase that, increase that and where you can find yourself that you can be able to make a living And then just slowly, you can move on and just be an entrepreneur and sell what you do. Very good, Nancy. So tell everyone, tell all the scene, the month, what are the five steps to make the first million? Okay. Well, first of all, go ahead and open your LLC. Find your catchy what name. What is an LLC? I don't know what is an LLC. LLC tell me what is that. Is is a solopreneur um it's a it's a certificate that you get from the state to be able to operate business it's like a sole And trader you, here in uk right in uk they call yes. anything sole trader so you can you can trade by yourself yes. right yes yes And so LLC. that way you legally have your name out there make sure that you you put your name whatever business you're gonna name it second Go ahead and hire a company who can create your website. Do that is so important because you have to know like uh, when you're gonna market yourself, people are gonna ask you, what is your website? You know, and just get that ready. And I hire a company from actually UK, a, they made me a website. And it was pretty cool. I was so happy and pleasant wow. for that. And the third one. Here in UK, we are very cool, yeah? Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one, if you could, I would suggest you to uh, hire a mentor. You can hire Great. a mentor. Great idea. Um, it depends on what kind of business you're going to open. 
um, here in Houston, we do have a score where you can have access to all kinds of mentors. You can book an appointment with them. It could be virtually or it can be by phone. And they will tell you, like, if you have a, like, you don't know, you don't have idea how you're going to marketing or how you can promote this product. Uh, they have probably experience with that. And they will kind of like unlock where you are not comfortable to do. So that's kind of like another way that you can find yourself like unlocking and find different strategies. And four, you have to get yourself up there, networking. Uh, get your business card and give them away, meet new people. I know it gets so uncomfortable in the beginning, but trust me, once you start doing it <laughs> over and over and again and again, it will become natural. So you were just gonna, you're gonna share what you do, how they can contact you, uh, how they can do business with you, how they can reach out to you and all that stuff. So that's the, the pretty cool. So you're gonna build new relationship and those clients, they can become your best friends too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And fit, my fit is like, Okay, collect your payments. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. take the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chin, chin, kachin, yeah. <laughs> Step <laughs> five is kachin, yeah. Yeah, pay yourself and get your earnings and reinvest in yourself, reinvest in your business and continue grow it. And always, this is not like one stop. You will have to continue learning, learning, learning a uh, new skill. Uh, I don't know, but I think a person must learn all the time, like every day. There is there is a lot of tons of things that you can learn. So that's my advice, and it's been helping me so well. And I hope I can inspire other people out there, other single women. Uh, maybe you can write a book like I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, Why you wrote this book? Tell us. Tell us. What made you write this well, book? Why you write this book? The reason why is kind of like to share my story. And as an immigrant, like how I pursued my dream and I was able to, to kind of like move and go in this way and this way. And the second one is like, uh, I want my business to be number one. Ah, you and want to be writing always, one more book now? I want to be number one. And number that's my one. desire. Oh, my God. One. Yeah. And, <laughs> you want to become the I, biggest, the biggest maintenance uh, agency <laughs> there in Texas? That's what you want to do? My God. I want to be a, a great builder. And wow. for that, you have to I think you're already a great builder. Yeah, you are a great Thank project you. manager. Yeah, so so you want more? Yeah, so I want to <laughs> build and I want to create my own designs, and that's like a lot of goals that I have in my sales. So you want to become sales. a developer, Nancy? You want to now to build buildings? That's what you want to do with your team? Yes. You want to buy yes, land to build the building? Really, and sell the mm -hmm. houses? Yeah, you can make a lot yes. of money with that. Yeah. You got a lot, yeah. of course. You yeah. can build all kind of stuff, and I think that's well. That's my desire to do is like just build and create my own design, my own vision out there, <laughs> and that's my goal. Wow, that was fantastic! Yeah, I think that you really like what you do. You're very passionate about. It. Yeah, I love property as well. Also, we did we did it back in the day for. For a long time, we make a lot of money. We have a lot of fun with it. We still invest in property. We like some, and we love development and things like this. It's just, you know, when you are passionate about something, right? But yes. again, it doesn't come out of the sky. It come with a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. It's about to develop these skills, you know? I already, I've been asking you because, you know, people think that it's easy, but I, but, <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult, you know, to get a, a contract right, right? To make sure that everybody delivers on the part and 
And, uh, you know, and then you make a mistake. Some of those mistakes are expensive. And it's not yeah. hundred dollars or two hundred dollars mistake. Sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes it could be five thousand, yeah. ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar mistake, right? So, uh, you have to be very careful. You have to pay very attention, a lot of attention to this paperwork, to the timing, right? And uh, and and I'm so happy that you being a woman and you managed to to put all these boys, you know, uh, in line, and they are working very good for you, I believe. Yeah, they are. That, yes, that, that's good. Yeah. And it, you know, it's just like a, it builds a lot of respect. Yeah. When you kind of like that, you are more professional. If you, you have to be professional. Yeah. If you are like a professional with them, they will respect you. And you have to be fair also, yeah. And, you have to be fair as well. You have to be fair too as well. Yeah. And I believe in people, they can understand each other. Your communication mm. is so important. Communication is important, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I remember to the boys, or the, the people that used to work with me, uh, my builders there, at the end, they're like my, they were like my family. You know, some of them, they were with me 10, 15 years. There's so many different projects that we have been together. Tough projects, you know. One, I opened one restaurant here in, in United Kingdom once, and I have this brilliant idea that I want to do a guitar on the on the on the ceiling. In mind, it was like a five meters guitar. What crazy idea! I don't know what I was thinking about it. Yeah, and my bid they were looking at me. I said, "Harry, you really you want a guitar on on the on the ceiling? Do you thought this properly?" And I said, "Yes, it's an Spanish restaurant. And I want a guitar." And they did the guitar, you know, they they did every they tell me, you sure this is what you want, Harry? We do it, but you want a guitar for sure. And I, so we went we went to a lot of crazy things that I in my business career when I was in the property when we did the rest and everything. And you know, sometimes we have to, we went to tough times sometimes, to difficult times, you know, to sometimes like this guitar for the rest and it was a huge challenge, you know. It was very difficult to build. Now I closed the restaurant. I lost two hundred thousand pounds. Still, the guitar is there in the roof. <laughs> Unbelievable, you know. The guitar, the restaurant is not a Spanish restaurant anymore. It's a Chinese restaurant, and the Chinese guy still have my guitar. So the guitar was amazing. It was the only good thing that we did in this city. <laughs> so, so, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guitar was amazing. I still the guitar is there, and now it's a Chinese restaurant. But anyway. The whole point is that uh, when you have your team, right, and um, and you build this sense of of um, of uh, of bonding with them, right? I remember the people that I work with that they work with me now um, in these type of things, like electricians, plumber, and whatever. They have been working with me for fifteen years, so. Every time that I say, can you go and fix something? They tell me, Harry, it's 400, 500, 1,000, whatever. I just pay them. I just don't need to talk to them. Oh, why 1,000? Why it's expensive? Why do you change this piece? We already have a relationship for years. If it's 1,000, they already did the best to make the best price for me. And, you know, they have the keys of all our pro the properties and everything. So when you, the more you 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 build relationship also with your workers and the more you pay them fair, you know, because here yes. in London what people never understand is that here in London is not about the money, right? It's 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 more about the money because uh, sometimes everybody is busy and when you have an emergency, right? They can pick and choose with whom they're gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> because they have lots of jobs, right? With the good people, when the people are good, they have jobs, so many jobs. So they pick and choose. So mm. are you, you, we usually pay them very good and fast, straight away. Mm. And every time I had to say, it, in honest truth, every time that I, that I had an emergency, they show up for me quickly and faster than for anybody else. And they, yeah, still, yeah, and they still do it. They still do it. And I'm impressed because now I don't have the same volume of, pro of jobs that I used to give them before. And I still, if I have property, if I, an issue in the property and I call them, they still will show up because there are years of experience and relationship with them, right? So I think it's, yeah. it's, it's having this, this um, deep relationship and be fair also with the, with the people, you know, with the team, you know, pay them the right amount, you know, don't 
Um, so when when you are in real, because it goes in both ways, right? Sometimes, uh, okay, there is time and whatever, but sometimes we have an emergency and we want them to be fast and respond quickly. And then uh, you need to build, like you build this relationship for a rainy day, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. You have to be super fair. Make sure that you always take care of the family as well. You know, it's like even on holidays, sometimes like I, you have to kind of reward those relationships. Of too, course. Prize them and, and keep on going because they're going to be with you for years. <laughs> yeah. And for me, <laughs> in my case, I want to be a developer. So oh I my God, you want to be a developer? No, my God. You're going you're, you're gonna to reach the sky, yeah? Next podcast, you're going to be a billionaire, yeah? You keep doing this, yeah? Anyway, mm -hmm. so I, let us know, yeah? When you have the front plan, you're going to do your, your, your first development, yeah? We are very happy to support you, yeah? And we do have contacts. We do know a lot of people, so we can help you out with the finance and with the things for the project for sure to make sure that that you succeed yeah i have a lot of friends in us regardless that that they are they are based here in in london and uh, we all want to empower women to do great things right especially single moms so yeah. you can be in a, you're gonna be an example for how more women entrepreneur because it's a it's a very male dominated uh space right there are so many uh men entrepreneurs and and we need more women entrepreneurs right and uh women are very good yeah and from my team when i was my team all my my sales team they were women yeah they were very good they helped me to grow my business free really fast because women they are very very good for business very good to employ them in the company because they tell you the truth very quickly yeah so Boys, we go, oh, nah, that's okay, tomorrow. The women are different. The women, if they see a problem, they tell you straight away, yeah? The same way that yeah. when they don't want to go out with you, yeah? They don't want to go out with you. Oh, wait, well, you don't go out with me. No, because you're ugly, you know? The women tell you straight away what's the problem. And this for business <laughs> is very good. Yeah, yeah, for business is brilliant. The women will tell you straight away, oh, this is the when I remember when the guest was giving me a headache with something, I knew that was a problem, yeah? Because I... I remember the I had like on my side team that there were girls, right? And they, they were like, Harry, this is it. And I said, come on, give me a break. Harry, this is a problem. Harry, this is a problem. When the girls they were on top of me, I knew that I had to look into it properly because uh, they don't they just don't complain to complain. What they're saying something was because they, they cannot let it go. I had to sort it quickly. So I have a very good, very good experience. Uh, having women as an employee, right? Okay, Nancy, here's the thing. Yeah, you're going to be very successful. Yeah. Uh, yeah we wish course. you the great success that you build the Empire State again. Yeah. Just remember, yeah. keep learning, keep studying. Remember, be careful. You know, the land you're going to buy, make sure that you know that, the, that there is good capital appreciation, that there is a lot of people there. And then you're going to build a an amazing tower that is going to be beautiful and you're going to save the flat for a lot of money, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, well, with the thing that you already have, you already have the builders and the know-how, right? So you only yeah. need the land, few investors, yeah, and the right deal. How much yeah. we get there? Keep studying, yeah, remember? It's very important to have knowledge and keep going to networking, right? Because... Uh, Remember, your network is your net worth, right? And the more you are in this property game, the more people you know, right? And you will know people that can give you good deals in the land. You're gonna meet people that can give you good deals in the in the finance, developing finance, right? So you can build the the compounds, and then you win of you you will find uh, good brokers and estate agents that can set the property fast, right? So you have to keep now growing your team even bigger if you want to go to development. And we are rooting for you here in UK. We wish you the best and any any help you need, send us a WhatsApp and for sure 
we can make a couple of phone, couple of phone calls and help you out. Yeah? Keep inspiring, right. inspiring women and keep writing books. Yeah? Okay. Yes. So, Sorry. last message. So, <laughs> if somebody wants to learn from you, if somebody wants to get inspiration from you, how they find you? What they need to do? They need to just contact me. I can how? share my phone number. <laughs> Your phone number? Can... Okay. Okay, you can you can contact me. My phone number is 832-285-6895. And on my website is www.ycbuildersllc.com. And my book is on Amazon, so you can find it up there. And my website is right there back in this QR code. <laughs> I love your book, yeah. Very, very thank good title. You. Well done. Very good job. Yeah. So thank you so much, Nancy, for your time, for your advice. We're very proud of you. That was a very refreshing interview. Uh, I wish you the best. Um, from every single of you that they are uh, listening to the podcast in Apple and Spotify or in our social media. And if you are a woman, remember you can also make it like Nancy. It's going to take a little bit of research. It might take a little bit, go to school and learn a few concepts. But if you go out there and you do it like Nancy said, right? If you have a product and you can sell few in a weekend, there you go. You're in business. We all started in business kind of by accident. We saw a product and we start to sell it and we make a little bit of money. And literally, you know, you're already in business. And now you need to learn a lot of things about marketing, sales, uh contracts <laughs> and and a lot of work but it's very rewarding because you can you you will be owning your own time and with nancy tomorrow want to spend three months on holiday in hawaii with the family and children she doesn't need to have permission to anyone she can actually take off right and i'm sure her business is gonna run by itself automatically so thank you so much nancy keep writing books and for you, see you in our next episode, how brave entrepreneurs break that world and achieve the first million in sales. Bye for now. Follow us for more interviews with world's most influential, audacious entrepreneurs that overcame challenges and adversity, providing you with the blueprint of how they sold their first million so you can grow your business exponentially.